Okay, now hopefully um, I've provided you with everything that you're going to need so far. That Hopefully this uh, Chapter 6 will be the final installation in this uh, zombie slash post-apocalyptic survival guide. What you want to do is you want to start off with community gardening. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of building cities, uh, there have been some movements in local cities, particularly uh, in Victoria, British Columbia, where I live. Um, there have been some movements of people to try to start a lot more communal gardening in their backyards and the like. Uh, sorry, I just need a stretch um, for uh, for in the um, you know for the idea um, in the hopes of being able to prevent um, you know in the hopes that in the event that something goes wrong, well, there'll be plenty of food for people to live with. Again, uh, most of this is based on the entire ecosystem, and they're still forgetting the necessity for technology in various different areas. So, here's the uh, here's the idea. Um, without the um, with your uh, with your technology system, you're going to eventually want to gear down to 17th, 16th, 15th century level. But in the meantime, for your food supply, while you're dealing with your electricity and your and the like, uh, oh, also don't forget one of the very first things you're going to want to build after you've built sewers and everything else. Don't forget to build a printing press. This way, you can still reprint books. Um, this way, hopefully, you can still reprint books. Um, it may take a couple of years for everything, but if you're living only in a community of 40 or 50 people, this won't be an issue. Um, you know, you want to you want to probably gear down to something like the Gutenberg printing press and uh, just transfer to a number of copies of. Um, you know, of preferably every book in your system. This may take, uh, if you've got, if you've taken out like two or three libraries in the process, this may take some time, but it's worth it. Uh, trust me, uh, assign someone to work that printing press because, and it may be long and laborious work, but it's damn well worth it because of the fact that with um, knowledge, preferably 30 to 40 years down the line, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, even if technological society goes out, um, some of the books, particularly in what science and technology were, uh, were both the good bits and the bad bits, um, you won't get distortions down the line. Uh, you know, you won't you won't get distorted uh, legends down the line of what of what happened. You will also make damn sure that your gener that your kids and their kids will hopefully have the tools of critical thinking and the like. So this way, when they construct a society, they won't fall back into religious superstition, uh, much like what is plaguing our society right now. See my other videos on um, on how religious superstition, uh, mistrust of science. And uh, you know, and lack of critical thinking are causing severe problems in our society, including uh, uh, going towards this uh, uh, this techno-ecological crunch that I'm talking about. Hopefully, you will never have you will never have to use any of the things that I've talked about in this uh, in these six videos so far. But um, you know, I'm just prepping you for in the event that your fellow human beings are too illogical to realize that um, you know that we are headed towards this if we don't uh, colonize space. The next thing um, the next thing on our on our system is the fact that you want to. Um, Okay, so now, where was I? Uh, okay, we've talked about machine shops, we've talked about latrines, we've talked about trying to deal with an organizational system. Oh yes, communal gardening. Um, like I said, if each person, uh, in addition to whatever their job is for the new community, including soldiering, um, you know, has a communal garden plot which they take care of every so often, or their families do so, there should be enough food there for, you know, say 40 to 50 people, uh, you know, if you're in a local area. Eventually, you, uh, as more children are born, you will want to expand this and go into the local area, which means you will eventually have to conquer something roughly the size of a small fiefdom, and uh, you know, and develop your own um, system. Now, here's something I want to stress: you do not repeat. Uh, and now I'm going to get onto political systems. You do not we repeat. Do not want to build an, uh, an oligarchy or a dictatorship, like a uh, uh, like a monarchy or anything like that. You do not want to build a warlord system. The reason you do not want to build a warlord system is because of the fact that people who are often educated or will often get very rowdy or what have you. So, what you want to do is rather than dealing it with like your own personal fight them, you want to build it much. Um, now again. You can do whatever you want. Like you know, um, if if you decide that an a, that a, an authoritarian system works for you, um, that's all well and good. You know, if you're that illogical, but chances are, um, but chances are, an illogical system, um, you know, chances are an illogical system is a, um, uh, you know, is going to, uh, you know, probably cause people to be oppressed anyway. And I doubt very much that people are going to want to live in an oppressed system. They probably any, they probably just destroy their own society rather than actually live with that. So here's the plan, uh, you know, unless of course they're really, you know, unless of course they're really duped and they don't know any better. Because, I mean, chances are a lot of people are going to be emotionally scarred from a post-apocalyptic society. So there will probably be a lot of uh, warlords and demagogues and, uh, you know, and, you know, and and, and uh, dictators and the like who will all come up and say, if you don't support me, you'll end up going through something like what happened to the post-apocalyptic society again. And for those people who don't really understand science and technology, you know that that sort of emotional argument will get them over like right up, no, like nobody's business. But anyway, here's what I recommend, and this is just my own personal thoughts on a government system. I would recommend a more so well-informed government. 
anybody who has not read, uh, anybody who has not read uh, extensively what's in the library or has not gone through the educational system should not vote. But here's a, uh, here is a test which I would recommend uh, for people to be able to, um, for people to be able to vote. There are three criteria which I would, there are three criteria which I would recommend uh, for the system. One of which, um, if you are, um, you know, if you are uh, being, um, if you are working in some capacity in the society, even if it's like, uh, even if you are in charge of one of the communal gardenings, you should have a right to vote. Um, the second thing, however, is that there have to be two other criteria which, uh, which play into this. One of which, you should be able, uh, one of which is that you should be able to um, work with the basics of intelligence. Uh, the second of which is, um, again, working in the society is the, uh, is the very first criteria. The second criteria is that you should be willing at any moment to be called to arms to be able to defend against your society against uh, other uh, you know, tribal kingdoms coming in trying to uh, take over yours or hordes of zombies or whatever. You know, insert you know, enemy here. Uh, so that would be the second one. The third one is that your intelligence level should be up uh, to sufficient. If you are going to vote, you know, for any point of the society, you should be able to understand. Uh, you should be able to understand what's actually going on. So what I would recommend is uh, there should be a test, and this should be a test for anybody at any age. Um, if you are going into a bar to drink to symbolize the age of majority, you should be able to do as follows. Now, you don't necessarily have to be versed in calculus unless you're dealing with a technological problem. If you are dealing with a technological problem, or um, and this is one of the other ones, this is for only the first 20 to 30 years, and only if, after you're dealing with the gear down. After you've dealt with the gear down, if you are still, if your science levels, if you still have sufficient science that you're dealing with, um, you know, advanced level calculus or anything like that, like advanced level science, um, or still being able to explore the universe at this point, uh, which I doubt, but if you are still able to do so, then I would recommend uh, you are, um, that you are unable to vote on these issues unless you can understand calculus, uh, which means that you can uh, rapidly educate yourself on the issues. Um, otherwise, you should be able to do as follows. You should be able to spot logical fallacies in at least three different arguments. You should be able to write aptly, uh, you should be able to solve, without any mistakes, a quadratic equation. You should be able as well to um, have a basic understanding of, um, of propaganda techniques. And the reason that I suggest this, and, uh, and, the, and you should be able to at least extrapolate re reasonably far out. The reason that I suggest this, and uh, uh, you know, or at least particularly those first two criteria, you know, being able to uh, recognize logic, uh, uh, being able to recognize, you know, being able to think logically, uh, you know, knowing logic, knowing, um, and, you know, knowing how logic can get abused, um, you know, being able to spot it, and also being able to pass a quadratic equation, is that um, with mathematics you can avoid getting duped in, you know, in, in both in statistics and, uh, you know, both in statistics, facts, uh, taxes, you know. Any small kingdom, you know, uh, you know, any small community, even in distribution of resources, will require a, a large amount of math, um, you know, even for um, taxes. You know, any system which is worth its salt uh, will not be worked that will be not be worked on basic mathematics, but will be worked on a relatively complicated system for taxes. Quadratic equations do come in handy there. So that pretty much covers it. Uh, you know, in of course, with rate of inflation or what have you, like this is for a standard market community, uh, which you will be needing. So. Um, you should at least be able to pass those two criteria for voting. Anybody else um, should be able to, uh, at that point, run it on a town council system. Uh, you can vote, ba you can run based on that, but don't work it based on purely character alone or something like that. You need to be able to make sure that they are both character-based and competent. But also as well, bear in mind that um, that uh, attacks on character are still an ad hominem fallacy, which means that if somebody says something which does seem a little strange, uh, even if they may not be uh, you know, well-liked in the community or what have you, Listen to what they say with a grain of salt, but then um, it's just basically the only thing which I would recommend is as follows: uh, in the event that they're, um, you know, in the event that they, it's been said that they are, uh, you know, uh, they've had a, uh, a history of lying or something like that, but they are saying something which does seem a little off or what have you, rather than just simply not believing them, send someone. Note that I said someone said send someone, you know, one of the scientists or what have you, or whoever, to verify their claims. To verify their claims, and if it turns out that it actually is the case, you know, even if you don't believe them or what have you, don't, you know, it's an ad hominem attack, and you know, the mob, uh, above all else, avoid reverting to mob mentality. Even in a group of 40 to 50 people, this can cause severe problems. And small communities, uh, we know what that's like in uh, small, uh, you know, small communities where religion and Christianity and all that have, you know, uh, happened. You know, people are looked down on for promiscuity, or even looked down on for just getting condoms for birth control. They're automatically assumed they're promiscuous, or that sort of shit. We need to avoid that mentality after this. Anyway, 
that's my videos. I hope this all helped. See ya.